Hello everyone and welcome back to this tutorial on building your navigation. I think it'll be the last episode we spent on the navbar. After today you should have all the tools you need to build out your navigation uh, for both mobile and desktop uh, with the tools that you've acquired from these first four videos regardless of what your app is or looks like. Um, so far if you remember, we had our options one and two hard coded into the canvas. And these were um, also added here as dynamic data tabs. So if we go to our data tab and we go to app data and all menu options, we actually created these with an index and a name. And we allowed uh, navigation to happen that way as well with dynamic data tabs. And today uh, I'm going to show you why this is that much more powerful than hard coding as uh, I showed you initially in the first video. So the first thing that we're going to do is go and fix up this, um, the way that we did the navigation here. Because if you remember, if I show you in the elements tree, in the floating group, in the RG hold, oh, that's for the, sorry, that's for mobile. It's going to be in group, ah, focus, of course. And in repeating group, um, here in the workflow for this group menu options, we're going to hide group focus A and then go to page index um, based on P is current sales menu options index. And we don't want to use index because index should be only for the sorting. And we did that quickly, um, but we have to fix it now. So we need another data type, another field for menu options. We have an icon, an index, a name, and we'd also like a nav tag. And that nav tag will be a number just so that it's consistent, but you can actually make it text if you want. Um, and the, the text will just be more natural when it shows up here. Instead of saying three, um, you could use text like, uh, I don't know, login or support or whatever your nav tag is. We're just going to use a number for the purposes of this tutorial and for the fact that we're actually sending numbers and it'll break everything if we send text. So just make sure that you're consistent with your data types. Now here in my workflow, I want to change it from index to nav tag. And then in my data tab, I can actually go to app data, all menu options, and I can edit them to add a nav tag two here. Thank you. And a nav tag of one here. Thank you. And now it should go back to working. If I refresh, right now it was sending one and two because of the index. Now it'll send one and two because of the nav tag that we've added. And the next thing that we want to do is do the same thing for the hard coded ones, which were groups B and C, I believe. Go to page index. P, yes, see, that's hard coded right now. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to add dynamic options for what's important. Let me hide group focus A. Here we have our two important tabs. And in our full view, they show up here option one, option two. And in mobile, they still show up, but these are the dynamic ones, not the. Um, not the ones that we hard coded. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a look here um, at what our data will look like. Um, I've decided that I wanted two important options, one and two, and they show up for the user, whether the user is signed in or isn't signed in. And this is where we add conditionals. And this is the power of dynamic nav, nav tags instead of uh, the fixed ones because we can add conditionals directly into the database to see if the user is signed in, then I'm going to show these. And if the user isn't signed in, I'd like to show these. Okay, so option one will be important. It'll be like, I don't know, uh, events, if you're building an events thing or tickets, if you're, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Option one is important. Option two is important for both the unsigned users and the signed users. And buried will be the ones that I'm burying into my um, menu here on the side. So option one and two right here. Option will become option three and four. And when the user isn't signed in, that's actually going to change to have an option to sign to go sign in. Okay, so we're going to build that out right now. Option one and option two are important. That's the thing to remember right now. Let's go to our data tab. And let's add a new field again. And this will be nav layer. And here we're going to be able to tell Bubble this is the important one or this is the buried one based on the layer. And I should actually keep consistency in my nomenclature. Nav layer, nav tag. Let's go to app data, menu options. 
and we're going to give these a nav layer of important. So one, save. And here as well, one, save. Okay, now what we want to do is in these important ones, we want to show um, the important nav layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, there's two ways to do this. And there's one that I prefer because it's faster and I'll show it to you. It's a little bit more complex. But I'm going to grab a repeating group and I'm going to stick it right in the header. Okay, it's going to be very small. It's going to look for menu options. It's going to do a search for menu options whose nav layer equals one. So this RG is going to load all of the important options. Okay, and we're going to call this important RG or whatever it is that you want. Um, the reason I'm doing this, even though this group is going to show absolutely nothing, um, the fact that the reason I'm going to show this, and we're going to go full list, um, and we're going to do width of one and height of one and x of zero and y of zero. And the reason we're doing this is because if I were to go here and try to load it, I would have to go menu options, do a search for menu options whose nav layer equals one, and I would have to write first item or item number one, it doesn't matter. And then I would have to copy this expression and I would have to go here and say, do a search uh, its menu options and I'd have to paste that expression in and instead of first item I would have to say item number two which is fine and it will work and I could show you that it works but the problem with this is if I do that I'm running two searches and if you have three important items then you're running three searches and so on and so forth whereas if I run the search in the RG I can actually just say type as menu options but instead of doing another search which I've already done because it's in the RG I can say important RG's list of menu options first item. And then here I could do the same thing. Instead of doing a search for again, I can say important RG's list of menu options item number two. And they should load. Now instead of writing option one, of course, we're going to keep it dynamic. We're going to go parent groups menu options name uppercase. And we're just going to copy this expression and paste it into here. Insert dynamic data. And let's go ahead and paste that expression. And now it should actually show up just, you won't see a difference here. Oh, yeah, you won't see a difference. We have option one and option two, but right now they're being loaded into the RG and then they're appearing here. So it takes a little bit longer uh, to show up, you'll notice. And that's the trade-off between having hard-coded and dynamic options is that sometimes they'll take a little bit longer to show up. But you can see it's very negligible. Uh, by the time the page is done loading, you will have your options showing up. Now, if you have a lot of options, uh, it may take a little while, and you might want to do something like a splash screen or something, um, or you know, have this data load first, the content load first, and then the nav options. There's, there's a few workarounds, and I'll show them to you afterwards. Now we're going to work on this, because we have option one and option two, and we need a second nav layer for option three and four. If you remember... Uh, we're going to bury option three and four, okay? And again, we're going to have sign in over here as another layer. So let's go to data. Let's go new entry. Index will be one. Name will be option three. And nav layer will be two because it's buried. And my nav tag will be three. And let's create that. Got it. And let's see if I can't just copy it here. Where is it? Option three. Let's go here. Let's go copy, 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 copy. Hmm. I don't think I can copy. I've never actually tried. All right, so let's write this in. Uh, index will be two or four, it doesn't matter. Nav tag will be four. Name will be option four. And the nav layer will be two because we're burying it, right? So let's create that. And let's go back to our focus group, our group focus, sorry. And in the group focus, in the repeating group, let's select first parent so we can get to the repeating group itself. We're doing a search for menu options and we're showing all of them. Now we're going to fix this to be by nav layer, and we're going to look for nav layer two. And these are the buried options for the signed in user. Let's preview that, and you should see it automatically change to options three and four. And all of a sudden, it's become very, very easy for you to change um, what's displayed here. And in, this one will go to four, and this one will go to three. So your navigation will be fully dynamic. As soon as you're ready, you can build out content and say, if p equals four, then show this. 
and you can easily build out the rest of your site using this dynamic um, menu form. So let's go with a new entry and index will be one, name will be sign in. Uh, actually, let's add this one as sign out just to show you how easy it is to add uh, an option. Nav tag of five and nav layer two. Let's create this. And all of a sudden, without even reloading the app, um, the sign out will appear and I'll have the option of signing out my user. Cool. Now let's add a new entry and let's go index one. Name will be sign in. And the nav layer will now be three. And this is my case here. Uh, when user isn't signed in. So all the important ones are, regardless of the case, will show up. And that's why they're a one. This buried is a two when the user is signed in. And this buried is a three because the user isn't signed in. And you can build out your data structure like this um, on paper or in, in, in a graphic design app. And it really, really will help you a, create the site, and two, maintain it afterwards. And then you can add the nav tags next to each of them. So I would actually go in here and I would say, okay, one, nav tag one, nav tag two. And if they're text, you could actually just write it. Okay, this one is, uh, I don't know, studies. And this one is, I don't know, uh, shop. Okay, stuff like that. So let's go back to here and we have a sign in index of one, but you'll notice that the nav layer is three. So now we have to show the nav layer of three. In the, in the group focus, let's select first parent. And we're going to go search for menu options, nav layer of two, right? Now we have to add a conditional. We have to say when current user isn't signed in, then our data source changes to be do a search for menu options whose nav layer equals three. Perfect. Preview that. Let's go ahead. And now it says sign in. Hey, so now you've learned to actually build out your uh, navigation based on purely dynamic data. We're just going to go make sure that works. Let's go to all users. We don't have one. Let's create a user with as of uh, gmail.com. And now if I run as this user, the user will be logged in. So we should go back to seeing options three and four. Yep. And sign out. There you go. Easy as that. Now that you've had, now that you have this structure, you can actually create all of your navigation right in the data tab, and it'll load based on the menus that you've created. The two important options will always be here. If you want to add an important option, all you need to do, literally, is grab this, drag it out, and say this will be the third item that's found in my RG. So let's go appearance item number. You change this to three. And then you can add in the data tab, you can add another menu option. And just make sure that the nav tag is one. Let's give it an index of three and a name of, uh, I don't know, added now and a nav layer of one. Yeah, sorry, that should be nine. And let's create that and let's go and check out design. Yeah, there it is. So if you run into formatting problems, you can adjust accordingly. The last thing that we need to do is decide on the third condition. Okay? And the third condition is independent of these two, but is um, mobile view. And mobile view is going to load. Um, it's going to load the stuff for either user signed in or user isn't signed in, and you have to decide what's showing up on your menu. Is it just the important? Is it the important and the buried, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and do that and fix up our mobile view. And to do that, we actually go into, uh, if I recall, group RG hold. RG hold is going to have our mobile views. Let's select the menu and let's go search for menu options. Menu options and let's add, let's say, nav layer equals one. And then you can say, merged with oh we actually know what the original menu options are so we can just select them from important rg's list of menu options and then go with uh merged with do a search for menu options whose nav layer and merged with just adds them to the list nav layer equals two and we can copy this expression and go conditional when current user is logged out, isn't logged in, then we can paste the uh, data source and we can paste in this expression. 
but now we're looking for a nav layer of three. So let's preview that. Let's see what happens. Let's go into our mobile view. Here's the important one. Ooh, it looks like they all showed up here. Oh, no, that's right. These are the first three um, that you usually see in this bar here. And then you have option three, four, and sign out. So this is all good, and we can actually still navigate between them. And last but not least, we need to try to run this as a user who is not signed in. So let's go ahead and... Hmm, how do I run it as a user who is not signed in? Hard to say, hard to say. Let's add a button right here and say sign out. And let's go start edit workflow and let's go uh, navigation, uh, no account, sorry, sign user out. Okay, preview that. Let's actually look at it on mobile. And right now we have our one, two added now, three, four, and so on. Let's actually go ahead and sign out. And now you have only your first important ones and sign in. So now your navigation works entirely based on one set of conditionals and in the mobile view as well. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about, if we have time, the last thing I wanted to talk about is a second layer of navigation, but I think I'm just going to wrap that into um, a video where we actually build out a second layer of content. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. This will be the last video for the nav tab. I hope you enjoyed this. This will be the last video for navigation. And next, we're going to start building out a little bit more content. So we'll see you in the next one.